the Anking title. And we kind of came up with, I think, well, we thought it was a fun play on the word Anki. And I think the idea was we wanted to teach people how to use Anki and essentially make them the on king, you know? Like we want the whole community to be so good at this that they feel really good at it. And then, uh, because I was the one making all the videos, I think a lot of people refer to me as the on king, right? They think I'm the one. Uh, but I mean, it definitely has been a group effort. The way we started in medical school was like, we need to use this service. Our classmates need to use this service. So let's create something that works for, that works for us and our classmates. And then it turned out to help everyone else. This idea of sacrificing our own self-interest to benefit the lives of others is something that's really important to all of us. And it's been this really cool, common uniting point for the company that in the end, you know, what we're interested in is we're invested in making people better. Like in the end, we all want to be doctors. We all want to be physicians. That's why we're in medical school. There's so much in medical education that's just, it's just frustrating. There is some dissociation of what it felt like. One of the things I've done, um, I've kept a journal and I've broken it up into what was my you know, stage of education or training at the time. So I have thoughts written down as a first year medical student. What did it feel like when I was drowning in all these resources and what study strategies to use? Clinical rotations, you know, what were the things in each of those rotations that I wish I would have known? What was meaningful when an attending or a resident did or said something to me? I like that, that attitude. It's kind of transforming it into like a way of mentorship in a way. For me, my biggest success was making it all the way through med school, still remembering why I wanted to do this and still in it for the reason that I was originally in it. I remember interviewing and there was this old jaded doctor asking me about my humanitarian projects I'd done as a pre-med and he responded back and was like, well, how do I know you're not gonna be like the rest of my residents who you know, are jaded now and complain about the system, you know, whatever. And I was like, I, I don't know, I'm just not. This is why I'm in it, you know? And, and here I am at the end of med school and I don't feel like I'm that jaded doctor. We are going to Geisinger! Geisinger! You know, I've had multiple businesses approach me about the Onking stuff and wanting to work with them and consult with them and things like that. And uh, I told someone, I said, you know what, you couldn't pay me a million dollars for the time I have left over because I wanna be a doctor. And outside of that, I want to be a dad and I want to be a husband. And so the rest of my time is invaluable. You couldn't buy it from me. Uh, this is what I want to do with my life. Heading home from the airport. Got Tyson's picking up food though. Uh, when I first learned about Amboss, I interpreted it, I think like most students, as another question bank. Um, something I could use, you know, 2,000, 3,000 more questions that I could use to study for step one. As I got closer to step and I started realizing that like, I have these holes in my knowledge here and there, little gaps. And I was like, you know, I don't need a full lecture on this topic. I need just a quick, succinct, jog my memory on a few points so I can put the pieces together. And I realized that the Amboss learning cards for me were the ideal solution for that. They were succinct, they were efficient, and they were high yield. I think Amboss is extra unique because it's teaching you how to approach the questions. It's not just teaching you the question. Uh, and that's a skill set that I have never experienced in anything else that I've used. Uh, you know, most of them are, here's a question, take the question, here's why you got it wrong or right, move on to the next question. I had been using Anki very thoroughly, and it was great because I had a lot of recall, but I didn't know how to integrate that information. And that was the next step in how do you use that information you know. Like how do you actually use it to take care of somebody? I always tell students it's all about coverage. On shelf exams, you are always going to get like 15% of the questions. There is no possible way you could have prepared for it. You could have read like six textbooks and gotten an extra six questions right. Um, but Amboss got us a very large percentage of the way there. Anki got us a smaller portion of the way there. And that gave us and maximized the coverage that we needed to get the the best score on the shelf exam. I got into the wards and I realized like the, the whole point of third year is you need to not look like an idiot in front of your attending. And I realized that you know you had your pre-rounding time in the morning. I could go to the Amboss library on my phone. I used Amboss more as a third year medical student than any other time in medical school. And I would say that I used 
proportionally, I used it more than than any other resource in all of medical school. I expected AMBOSS to be kind of my second best resource, and everyone told me to expect uh, that these other QBanks were going to be superior. Uh, by the time I finished AMBOSS, I was done. You know, I was successful. That was all I needed. People said you need to do every flashcard, every review, right up till the day you take step one. I said I'm going to suspend them all because I understand how memory works, and if I, you know four weeks out from my test, that's fine. I want to spend more time in the practice question, so I did. And now if you go online and look at the internet or what anybody's doing, it's now the standard. Nick, he usually scores the same or better than me on every exam, just naturally. And he um, prepared using AMBOSS and another question bank, did every single question for internal medicine. I chose to only do AMBOSS and we got the exact same score. And so the coverage was completely there. And I used Anki to build that foundation of knowledge, but AMBOSS got me all the rest of the way there to score and honor that internal medicine rotation and honor the internal medicine shelf. AMBOSS has clerkship guides, and they were life-saving. Um, they tell you all those little tips and tricks and what are the algorithms and the formulas that you're gonna need. What's the workflow gonna look like? Advice that you don't get from you know other platforms. It almost feels like you have maybe like a fourth year or senior medical student just kind of giving you that little bit of advice all along the way. In our service at the residency that I'm going to, I will be having to help manage 60 patients at a time. Making quick decisions is going to be essential to success. So a lot of neurosurgery is acute care. And so being able to quickly, in an emergency situation, be able to pull up the AMBOSS app on my phone and use the acute care checklist is going to be the most effective way to do it. The future looks really bright for med students. They don't know how easy they have it compared to three years ago and I'm sure compared to you know 10 or 15 years ago. If I go back to medical school day one, I think the advice that I would give myself is to, to connect with mentors even earlier in medical school. The other thing that I would tell myself is um, to buy the second monitor for my computer. <laughs> I was on my computer so often, use, I had Anki, Anki up in one screen, and I had AMBOSS practice questions up on the other screen, and it was just so useful to have technology that worked for me. Most of us who end up in medicine have been high-performing people our entire lives, and we're not used to being wrong. It, doesn't ha it didn't happen very often. And becoming comfortable with that, and becoming comfortable saying, I'm gonna say this is my answer, even I might be wrong. I experienced and learned that the more I did that, the more I was willing to put my nickel down and I learned better, my colleagues respected me more, my attendings and my residents that I worked with respected me more and valued my contributions more. And I'm not saying make stuff up. Have a defensible reason, you know, have some clinical judgment that you're guiding to that decision and be able to explain how you got there. Medical school is extremely taxing on the individual on family members and support team, it takes over your life. And you can't lose focus of what makes you, you. If all you are is a medical student and you don't do as well on those exams and you're not getting the, you know, the marks that you really wanted, all of a sudden your whole worth is based off of just a score. Your whole worth is based off of a class rank or how many publications you have. And if those things aren't going well, which they're not always gonna go well, then, you know, where do you find your worth? You have to have that focus. You can't let go of that. Like, that's what I wish I would have understood more of. And I don't know how to, like, convey that to people because it's a journey that you have to go on yourself to figure that out. Get it? That's it. Nice. All right. Nice. 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 I hope that was okay. <laughs> is my voice a little distracting or is it okay? All right, all right. Oh, so good. I love it. Uh.